Nick Lawrenson from the Porter Report back here again with another coaches showcase today. We have Rice head coach Scott Pera. The Owls are coming off another successful season. They keep going upwards under Scott Pera. They went 19 and 16 last year, possibly their best record under him. Picked up the program's first postseason win since 2017. How are you doing, Coach Pera? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. So the major news in the program right now is the Rice Owls are moving to the American Athletic Conference. Just talk about that. Put that in perspective of how great that is for the program. It's just been, you know, much anticipated um, and really, really exciting. You know, our kids are excited. You know, our our fans, our alumni, you know, everybody, our staff, everybody's just excited about, you know, you know, you, you build a program, you, you spend a lot of time and energy doing this, you get it to a point now we think we're on really solid ground. And and now it, going to this new league, you know, kind of changes the perception too. Um, you know, people try to recruit against us for certain re- ways, you know, academics, we don't care about this. Don't Well, I mean, now we've won 19 games. We are in the American Conference. Uh, we're recruiting at a pretty good level. I, I find it hard to you know, we keep knocking those things away that you can't, you know, say about Rice basketball anymore. And this is a big one going to this conference. Yeah, and in the postseason, those teams that moved from the Conference USA to the American did amazing. I mean, you guys picked up a win. Charlotte won the CBI. North Texas and UAB were in the championship of the NIT. Florida Atlantic made the Final Four. Talk about the whole core group that's moving over and how great that is. Well, I wish some of them were staying. Um, no, look, I, I told people this all the time. You know, when, when everybody's hitting me up in March about all this success, I said, well, I, I knew this league was good in January. I mean, these teams are really good. Uh, they are really well coached. They have talented players. I mean, just look. You know, you talk about the portal report. Well, just look where some of the guys from some of these teams go. Um, you know, look what Charlotte lost and where those guys are going. And, you know, obviously we have, you know, Quincy going to, to Xavier from us and, and you know, UAB, all the talent they had and what they graduated, you know, and, and Jelly Walker, what he did there. And it's just, it's just a really, really good group. It was a really good Conference USA League last year. And those teams all going to the American are just going to strengthen the the American, which is already a good conference. Yeah, and I mean, you have some good talent coming back. You mentioned Quincy's gone, but you have Travis Evie coming back, Max Felder coming back. Just how awesome is that? They've really become longtime rocks for this program. Yeah, I, I think for us, I, and I've told many people this, because too many people focus on Quincy leaving. Well, we had two other kids that had a chance to leave, and they stayed, uh, Travis and Max. So going two for three uh, in, in this era, in these days, I think it's a pretty good percentage. And, you know, for those two guys want to, to, to want to come back here and finish their careers here, you know, means the world uh, to me, you know, because they, they want, they see what we're doing. They've been such a big part of what we're doing and they kind of want to see it, you know, do a year in the American and see if we can get this thing, you know, another step. And that's 20 plus wins and contend for an NCAA tournament bid. Yeah. And that all starts also with the transfer portal additions. You guys got a couple of really good pieces coming in. Let's talk about them. Noah Shelby. Coming over from Van, he's a Texas kid. What has he brought in the program so far? Yeah, boy, it's, it's it's great to have him. You know, he he's a guy I think that we targeted right out of the gate as somebody that fits us really well. And when you have a kid from Vanderbilt, you know, you kind of understand that the academic piece is already built in too and with him and his family. So it was kind of a, a perfect marriage, you know, right out of the gate for them and for us. And we we're you know fortunate that he had the interest, that he wanted to come back to Texas. That, that he saw value, especially at Quincy leaving, right? There's an opportunity. He's a tremendous shooter. But the other thing that we're really focused on, Noah, and he's done a great job this summer, is making plays for others. Um, and that's going to be a big part of, of what he does for us. Yeah, you mentioned that academic piece. And Sam Aljinki comes over from Cal, another really good academic institution. Just how does that rigorous schooling for both of them help when you're going into a program like Rice where academics is really high? And how has he been looking so far? He had 14 starts last year for the Golden Bears. Boy, he plays hard. And then that's something that we really are welcoming, you know, with his 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 body, his athleticism, and how hard he plays. It's something we we really need, you know, because we need to get deeper and we need to get more athletic. You know, and him and Anthony, who we'll talk about in a second, are really providing that. And uh, so we're excited about Sam and you know, he's a really good shooter as well. You know, you know, from following us, how our system works and, 
Uh, you know, we try and load up on as many of those guys as possible, but we got to get better on that defensive end this year too to make that jump. And and some of that recruiting was targeted towards that, and that's where Sam and Anthony really come in. Yeah, you mentioned Anthony. I go to school in Big South Country, so I've watched him quite often over there at Gardner Webb. A couple strong seasons at Bowling Springs last year: thirty starts, forty-eight point three percent from the field. Some good numbers against good teams. I believe he scored twenty-one points against UNC. What can that experience and just playing that well bring to a program like yours? You know, he's just been, he's had a great summer. He's been terrific. Uh, his just, his maturity, his acceptance of his role, his ability to defend multiple positions, and he's making open shots as well. So you know, all those things combined equal uh, a lot of playing time, probably uh, for, for Anthony Selden. And he's just been a, a really welcome addition, you know, just pleased with all three of those guys. They fit our culture. Perfect. Uh, they've been, they just kind of really, really fit in how I'd hope they would. Yeah. And on to the schedule. I mean, of course you got an American schedule this year, so it's gonna be tough. You're also going to Texas and Houston. So you're challenging yourself and you're playing in-state opponents. That's what everyone wants when they go to college, right? Yeah. And that's part of the thing we tell our kids when we recruit them, you know, we want to play great non-league games. And we want to pay, play, you know, obviously in a, in a very good league. And both those things are happening. And we also have Harvard coming here. We're playing in a, a tournament in Vegas and MTE with, you know, five very good other teams. That, you know, won multiple of them that won 20 plus games last year. So, yeah, the non-conference is challenging. The conference will be really challenging. And, uh, you know, it's important for us to just, you know, really continue to finish this summer strong going to the fall, knock on wood, you, you know, staying healthy is such a big part of it. But with our depth this year, that should be able to help us if, if, if something unfortunate would happen that in the past has been difficult for us at Rice. So like I said, you know, just really excited about where we are, um, proud of what we've done, and, but we think there's a lot more more things to, to be done. Yeah, lastly, let's talk about what you've seen this summer. What else needs to be done? What have you seen out of your bunch? And what do you can, what can you see growing in these next couple of weeks? Yeah, I, I think we need to finish strong with what we're installing both on both sides of the ball so that the new guys kind of understand our our language. It's different than a lot of people's. Uh, defensively, we changed a couple things, but mainly the change of just being deeper and, and more athletic and longer. Like I was watching tape this morning with one of our guys, and you can just see, you know, the length. Like a young guy like Andrew, you know, who who came on last year at the end, he's going to be impactful and he's going to have some big games as a sophomore. I, I really truly believe that. And he's long and athletic and, you know, kind of like totally different than Max, which is a different kind of way you have to prepare for us. So there, there's a lot of things that that good are going on. The guys are gym rats. They're in the gym working. Um, they, they like each other and get along, which, you know, being connected is really important too. And, and, you know, I think that was a big part of FAU success last year. They were just so, so connected as a group and Dusty and I had talked about that and uh, it was obvious when you, you you prepared for them and played for them and watched them and you know we need to be that way to be successful well coach I appreciate you hopping on I wholeheartedly believe that this program is going to be up towards the top of the American soon you got it it's in great hands it's in great well, hands. I appreciate, I, I appreciate that it means a lot and uh you know like I said I'm you know I'm proud of what we're doing here Lo love being here and you know we can't wait to start in this American and, and get this thing rolling Awesome. I appreciate you. Speak soon. You got it. Take care.